How's it going? Happy time zone, wherever you are around the world. Uh, welcome on in. Feel free to drop a hello in chat. Let us know where you're hanging out from. My name is Ian Douglas. I'm a senior developer advocate here at Postman, and I'm joined with two of my coworkers. I got John and Vivek. Uh, we'll let them introduce themselves. Uh, let's start with Vivek. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about like who are you? What's your background? How long you been a Postman? What do you do here? Uh, stuff like that. All righty. Hey, everybody. So I've been at Postman for almost eight years now, um, and I've been working with computers for basically my whole life. Right now, if you're working with it, the API monitoring product or if you run collections locally, et cetera, that's the team that I, I work with. Um, and yeah, I think over my time here at Postman, I've worn pretty much every hat available because you know we're still a startup. So I started at Postman when we had like 10 people we had more products than people at that time. <laughs> it was responsible for every single thing. So, I mean, yeah, basically, I'll, I'll do whatever's necessary. That's awesome. Eight years is a long time. Oh, how, yeah. how long has Postman been around? We've only been around like 11 years now? Coming uh, up on 11 years? I think 2014 or something is when it officially started. Oh, okay. All right, so, so nine years. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Well, let's uh, let's go over to John. John, uh, give us a bit of background on you. Yeah, sure. Uh, I've been at Post for four years now. Um, and prior to that, I was with a another software company that dealt with APIs uh, in the ratings and reviews kind of space. Uh, so I have an API platform there. I was the developer uh, evangelist for APIs um, and tested the APIs to make sure they our clients uh, needed that clients use case. And that's kind of my position now in Postman. I'm a software architect uh, where I work with clients uh, who are implementing different features um, and integrating with different applications. Uh, so yeah, on the implementation technical side of things is where I, oh, I sit with the Postman. And I can uh that Vivek is a very helpful and knows more about Postman than most people. Uh, and is always really uh, able to jump in and help solve problems. So, thanks. That's awesome. Well, I feel like a baby next to uh, the two of you. I've only been here <laughs> a little over a year and a half, and uh, I'm constantly learning something new. I'm in the app, and I'm like, oh, I didn't know we did that. So it's pretty great. Uh, good deal. Well, thanks for uh, thanks for joining us uh, today for both of you. Uh, big big help. I'm looking forward to diving in on some talk around like API performance and look at some of the tooling and so on. Um, so we're going to spend the session kind of like sharing stories, you know, whether they're good stories or horror stories about APIs and performance and, and background and things that we've seen, uh, things we've encountered. Uh, we're going to take a look at the performance testing inside of Postman. Uh, we'll do a little bit of live coding kind of as we go. Uh, we're planning to go for about an hour if we go a little bit longer, that's great. Uh, no more than an hour and a half, but uh, we'll, we're going to aim for about an hour of content. So, uh, Cool. Well, as per usual with our live stream, we like to start our live stream with a segment called In Case You Missed It. We need like a big flashy, like, you know, In Case yeah. You Missed It sort of banner to, to kind of come across the screen. But uh, I'm going to share my screen over here and talk about a couple of blog posts. I'm just going to close up chat here for just a minute. And... Um, We'll, we'll bring it back, but uh, hello to everyone from coming in from around the world. Uh, we'll get to all of your greetings here in just a minute. Um, you know me, I love our blog. I love kind of highlighting our blog posts. Um, this is a new one that just came out, how to run monitors now within the Postman API. So if you're used to using Postman monitors, you can now launch those using our API. Um, so we've got like pretty well-documented uh, 
you know, blog post here, how to get started. It's, it's pretty lengthy. It's going to take you through step by step how to get that going. Um, we also had a guest blog post, and this kind of ties into what we're going to be talking about today. Um, and this guest blog post was Nikki from Level Up Coding and basically talks about the difference between performance testing, load testing, and stress testing and what those things mean and, you know, how to get started on those. So really, really good blog post there. Uh, go check that out. As far as upcoming events, we do have Intergalactic coming up on August 23rd. And that session is going to be all about testing and designing and developing out a GraphQL-based API. So a lot of us are familiar with REST APIs. Um, some are, are familiar with GraphQL. If you've been kind of watching our State of the API report that we just published, uh, what, about a month ago now? Uh, you'll see the GraphQL is like gradually creeping up there. It took the number three spot from, uh, from SOAP-based APIs. Uh, as an architecture. So we were pretty excited to see that one uh, jump up to spot number three. Um, and so we're going to be doing a whole session just on like, how do, how do we dive in and like learn a little bit more about GraphQL? Um, so it's free to register. You can go check that out on postman.com. Uh, I'll drop that link in chat for everybody. Um, so please go register for that. It's free. Um, and you do get a, a copy of the recording afterwards. It's done through Zoom. And so you get a copy of the uh, recording afterwards. So if you if you register, then you get an email from Zoom with the, with the link to the video. Um, let's see. I think that's pretty much all I'm going to tease at this point. Uh, we'll talk about some other stuff at the end of the session. But uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's dive in and, and chat a little bit more about like the idea of API performance and, and API testing. Um, Let's see. Let's start with uh, Vivek. What what kind of what kind of things have you seen? We'll we'll start with a, with a couple of. Uh, let's start with some stories about APIs and and uh, performance and, and stuff. What uh, what kind of things have you seen over the course of your career when it comes to like APIs and and the idea like we saw in that guest blog post of like stress testing versus load testing and performance testing and things like that. Well, I think. Pretty much anyone who's building an API, right? Like, okay, let me start with what happens when you're starting off. APIs seem very simple. You're like, oh, we just need a CRUD API to like fetch this stuff, put this in there, delete a few things. We're good to go. You know, what could go wrong? And <laughs> we, we we just need <laughs> yeah, exactly. an like, API. Yeah. Project starts like that. Right? We just need this. Um, but then obviously over time, you need more things. Or, you know, uh, instead of more things, you just need different things. You start changing your API. And if you were lucky enough to build an API that is able to serve the load you need to serve, which also doesn't always happen, but if you were lucky enough to do that, eventually that luck is going to run out and you're just like, oh man, that API where we, where we just skipped pagination because we were like, why would we need pagination? We will make <laughs> API keys. Then you're like, oh, okay, these folks are doing this automated testing thing where they generate an API key. Now they have 10,000 of them and they're trying to like, fetch it all at once. So yeah, I mean, there's tons of these things where you just kind of get caught off guard. Um, and then once you're building like your 10th API, you kind of see it coming. And that's where you start to learn that, OK, maybe when we start building our API, um, we need to use an actual API design tool. So mm -hmm. we know, you know everything needs to have some sort of pagination in place, some limits on the response size. And all those rules are nice and all, but then you do actually have to test it because when your api reaches like meets reality that's when you know is it actually going to do what it's supposed to do and for as many people as it's supposed to do and you know i think that's kind of the lesson where this product is coming from is now every time we release an api we're like okay we know we have these many users these many people are, are using it concurrently can they actually do it and then mm -hmm. we go and test it right so pagination is probably one of the major things. Uh, other than that, probably just really large resources. If you're fetching yeah. logs or something or blobs, that can be problematic. So yeah. I'm sure like, people can relate to these because this, this is super complicated problems. Yeah, for sure. So someone uh, actually asked a really great question. <clears throat> Should we test experience APIs through the UI or from a tool like Postman? Um, I mean, when, when it comes to testing an API, the idea of what we consider the user experience of an API is sometimes what we call a developer experience. I think having a tool where you can just test what is it like to use this API? What does the response look like? What kind of status codes are we getting back? 
how are we handling that content? Are we doing things like pagination? Is it easy enough to see what these parameters are? How are we authenticating to it? It can sometimes be a lot easier using a tool like Postman as opposed to, you know, let me just call it from my UI and hope it works because then you've got to unpack, you know, whatever that response body is and handle all your exceptions if you don't get the code that you think. So I think, a, you know, using a tool like Postman is actually really ideal to kind of test what that developer experience is before you have to go implement it in a UI. Uh, yeah, thanks for the question on uh, on YouTube. Appreciate that. Um, and then someone else asked a question: What's the difference between JMeter and Postman when it comes to the performance testing? Uh, Vivek, have you used JMeter at all? Yep. Uh, Can you give I, us like I, I, f 15, 15, 15 seconds or less on the uh, on the difference? Because we are we are going to demo what's in what's in Postman. Hmm. Um. Oh, 15 seconds. I mean, that's a tall order. <laughs> Let's see. Jmeter. Oh, 30 seconds. <laughs> I was going to like break it down to 50 words, basically. Uh, but if you just, if you want to generate a ton of load, um, then Jmeter, I suppose. Uh, but if you want to test actual user scenarios, like what users will actually do through your product and you're che checking like a workflow or a transaction, then Postman. Good and do you think that's just available for, I mean, collections, this concept of collections? And yeah, it, it is basically a side effect of that. Just being able to take a bunch of requests and group them in some way allows yeah. you to, then you can assign whatever meaning you want to that grouping. Yeah. Yeah. The nice thing about the the Postman tool, and we, we will demo this here in a, in a little bit, is you can, you can go in and you can write your tests and your pre-requests uh, scripts and so on, and then have those things like call other things in order. Um, but you can also arrange them similar to a collection runner for the performance tool. And then you say like, go hit this with, you know, a bunch of users at a really high level. And so you can actually, like Vivek just said, you can kind of control like what that flow is going to be. You can say, go call this, then go call this, then call this. But then when that's done, you can have it like loop back around and like, do all those things uh, as part of Postman. Where in JMeter, you're like hitting one endpoint. You're like crushing that one endpoint. So you'd have to programmatically figure out that flow and like build that into JMeter yourself. Very similar mm -hmm. to Apache Bench. Have either of you ever used Apache Bench? That was like the old school one from like, what, 2006 kind of era, maybe earlier. Actually, no, it's been around even longer than that. It's actually it's actually available uh, as part of Mac OS now. It's kind of on there by mm -hmm. default. You can just you know, open a terminal and type A, B, and there's your Apache bench and you can like hit any kind of web page and tell like how many times to hit that endpoint, how many, uh, how many threads or how long you want to run it as a duration. And it's kind of this old school, like text based kind of, kind of thing. Um, but, uh, it's, it's been interesting how long that tool has been around. Uh, we use that for some like old school benchmarking back in the day, and I, I much prefer the uh, the visual types of tools we have now. But um, John, regale us with uh, any stories you have on like API performance and and tuning and things like that that you've seen. Uh, yeah, I'll uh, I'll tell a story about um, my previous job uh, around like load testing, stress testing, performance testing. Uh, so as I worked in a ratings and review company, so they had. Uh, the biggest event for them was Black Friday, right? Line, Cyber mm -hmm. Thursday, uh, working uh, and just shopping, right? So they need to make sure that they're not going to be uh, around that time. So, you know, six months prior to that, they would start scaling out their infrastructure to hand. We went through this rigorous performance testing, uh, stress testing, load testing that, to make sure that we were preparing our clients for the load that they were going to incur. Um, we did really, and the thing I want to just hammer home is, uh, it takes time to set this thing up correctly. As Vivek mentioned, like the 10th API you set up, you got it right. Uh, this, we, we really set up time across, set time aside, uh, to start testing this well in advance. So um, it's, it's, is important. It's, it's behind the scenes kind of, it's not pretty, but it needs to be done. That's, that's kind of my background about like why you should do performance testing. Yeah. Yep. Good. Uh, good. Good thing there. One. 
one story that I tend to go back to was when I was working at SendGrid. I was uh, one of the early employees there, and, and we uh, we started to determine that our database was kind of the bottleneck for a lot of our APIs because our APIs were all coming into this one database. And every API that we were building was using an ORM to talk directly to that database. And we started to figure out just doing like tracing tools and, and so on, uh, that those ORMs were actually more of the bottleneck than the actual database layer behind it. And so what we did is we actually built an API in front of our database and we got rid of all the ORMs. And so all of our services and microservices that were directly talking to the database now had to go through another API layer to get to the database. And, but that actually gave us a lot more flexibility because that API layer in front could then figure out, okay, well, you know, John's calling this endpoint, so I need to go talk to this database. And Vivek's calling this endpoint, which means I can go hit this NoSQL database or this Elasticsearch instance, or I need to go call all of these different endpoints and like consolidate that content and send it back to Vivek. Um, and so it gave us a lot more flexibility. And then we could scale out that API in front of the database to be like massively scalable because it was, it was a pretty lightweight um, just sort of lookup table. Like if you're hitting this endpoint, you go to this table, this database, or you need to get it off a primary or, oh, that's read-only data. You can get that off a replica, you know, or on this NoSQL, you know, uh, whether it was like a Cassandra or a Mongo or whatever we were using at the time, you know, go hit this node on the ring or, or whatever. And so we had a lot more flexibility in that API layer to kind of build out an API in front of the database. And we saw those connection times like really drop, even though introducing another layer of API, it does increase like your network latencies, especially when you're dealing with TCP IP, where it's that very chatty, like, you know, I want to connect. Okay. Okay. Now I'm going to connect and okay. And you always get that response back, you know, and so you end up getting a lot of network chatter. Um, but even with that and, and the extra latency of going through another connection to, in order to get to the database, we actually saw a, a pretty drastic decrease in, um, in overall like timings and latencies and things like that. So it really boosted our performance there. Um, we've had some really good questions come in chat here. I'm just gonna grab a couple of these uh, real quick. Um, someone was asking like, can we inject uh, external or can we use external load injectors to do user load? Um, and someone mentioned you can with Newman. We're going to be expanding the idea of like what our performance tool is going to do. Uh, we'll, we'll let Vivek talk about that here in a minute. Um, we can't commit to dates, but uh, we are going to be expanding that performance tool. And we'll, we'll show it to you here in, uh, in just a minute. Um, someone else was asking, uh, oops, wrong one. Everything's scrolling in here really quick. Uh, in comparison with JMeter, what are the pros and cons of using Postman for API performance testing? So uh, as, as Vivek just mentioned, like being able to build out a workflow uh, within Postman of saying, go call this endpoint and then call this endpoint and then call this endpoint makes it a lot easier to kind of plan that out inside of a UI tool like Postman as opposed to JMeter. Um, and so if you need to go hit an endpoint to go get an authentication token, which you then use in a follow-up, uh, kind of thing. It just makes that uh, that workflow a lot easier because then you can just say like, just go take this collection of endpoints in this order, go run that through the performance tools if you're running through multiple users and so on. Um, and uh, also, yeah, I would say that's. Yeah, I go was going to say also the, the context which in, you're in Postman writing tests, doing anything around your API, you don't have to go to JMeter, and then also in Postman. Mm -hmm. um, concept of collaboration. Like I can, once test is failing or it's back as I want, I can then go make a comment or at mention, he can come into my workspace and see what I'm running to troubleshoot True. that with me. Yeah. And having, here, having uh, the, having the team work on things together is a really powerful. Exactly. Aspect. So yeah. the whole uh, switching context thing, right? I think when I'm having conversations with people who are using the product, like a lot of them mention, oh, we have, we already have a collection because there's another part of our org that's like designing the API, or maybe they're running um, functional tests on it, like specifically talking about performance testing. And what usually ends up happening is the collection is considered the source of truth. And the performance testing team is given that collection. And until now, a lot of folks had to go and like manually write a, a script in JMeter or something else. And so everyone we talk to, they're like, okay, so now we can just take that same collection and we can just, whoa, 
and we can just run that, right? So I think mm -hmm. switching context, it's it's not just like a daily thing where oh, I have to switch apps, but it's it's also a workflow thing where you're like working with other people. Be the cat this morning, Vivek. <laughs> I did. Right, right. Random, random cat, random <laughs> cat viewing. Cat I, I mean, my, I'm sure my dog's, my dog's going to make an appearance here at some point. As soon as he, my dog hears me, you know, chatting with people online, he wants to come visit and say hi. So, you know, pe yeah, pets used to have some caution around keyboards, but I, I don't know. After like all this work from home, <laughs> they just walk all over the keyboard. I don't even know what they do. Anymore. That's oh. great. We we are a pet friendly live stream for sure. Um, yeah. Cool. Um, well, let me let me kind of preface this. So I, I want to get in. I want to show the performance tooling that we've got inside of Postman. But let me let me start with this. Do 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 either of you enjoy or appreciate uh, what we call dad jokes? And do you have a favorite dad joke? Oh, I I appreciate. I have no children, but uh, uh, yeah, I'm the fun uncle. Is what I tell my yeah. Nieces You're the do. funkle. Uh, yeah. yeah um, <laughs> I don't really know if I have a, any great dad. Jokes. I know there was a channel in Slack that just dedicated mm -hmm. to dad jokes. Yeah, we still we still do. Yeah, okay. yeah. There's a whole dad jokes channel. Yeah, yeah I jump yeah. over there. I was just looking at the channel and like usually, you know, if I if someone asks me for a dad joke, I just go here and I steal one because mm -hmm. who's gonna know, right? So yeah. here's right, one right. That I just I just came up with and I definitely did not steal. So <laughs> me, can I have a turn in the heads now? Hedgehog, no. <laughs> Hedgehog, yeah, that's great. Um, cool. Well, someone uh, someone just posted a, a perfect question for us here. Uh, can we use Postman for performance and load testing? And we're about to show you how to do that performance testing, um, and then we'll let Vivek talk a little bit about where that tool is going to go in the future. Um, small teaser: uh, we might do a little bit on the load testing side, but we'll we'll let Vivek. Uh, take us there in a minute. Um, cool. Well, on the theme of dad jokes, I'm just going to close up chat here for the time being. Uh, but if we do see good questions come in, we'll definitely highlight those on the screen. They pop us over here to the side. Um, so this is an API that I wrote that basically uh, it's, it's a dad joke database, basically, or what I call my database of dad jokes. Oh, um, wow. And it's just a serverless. Yeah, right. I mean, <laughs> People that watch my own personal live stream, they know like I'm going to hit them with like real zingers. Um, but uh, I basically wrote this serverless function. It's running on Firebase right now. And so I've got an endpoint that says like, go get a random joke. And for some reason that just failed because I didn't pick my environment. Um, or actually, you know, it should be a collection variable. It is. So go get that random joke. There we go. Uh, what do you call someone who <laughs> refuses to fart in public? You call them a private tutor. Nice. Um, yeah. So what this what this endpoint is doing is it's basically um, it's basically going out to the database over on Firebase and basically saying go generate a random number and go get a random element out of this out of this database and return it from there. Um, I've also got another endpoint and we can see here that I've got an ID number that comes back with my payload. So we can see like this one probably had to wake up for a little while. So this one took like a second and a half. If I run this again, it, you know. It, it'll gradually decrease in time as Google's like, oh, someone's trying to, you know, call this endpoint over and over and it will gradually see that time come down. Um, this is a good one. My wife told me she doesn't understand cloning. I told her that makes two of us. Uh, but what I can do is I can grab that ID value and now I can go get a random joke by that ID value here. And so I can just pass an ID value in and it's going to go fetch that, um, that one joke. Uh, oops, joke not found. I thought it was called ID. Um, ID. Oh, sorry. I have to pad it with zeros. This, this is um, where documentation would be super useful. Yeah. Yeah, okay. for sure. Yeah. One of these days I'll get around to documenting my own API. Um, okay. So I can, I can call it as, as an exact ID and we can see that took a lot, uh, a lot less time. This took about 400 milliseconds to call. We're calling the random joke took like almost twice as long. Um, and so this is, you know, 
because I wrote the code, I kind of have a, a, a deeper understanding of like how these things are working. But what we can do here is I'm going to show everyone how to get to our performance tool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the name of the collection. And then uh, in the context window that we see up here in the top right corner, we can click on the three dots and we can go into the collection runner. And this is normally where you would set up the, the collection runner and say, I want to run it manually, or I want to schedule this as a monitor. Um, and then you can tell like how often you want to run. And you can also select which endpoints and you can rearrange them uh, and so on. This is where we, we get into what Vivek was talking about, where we can say, I want to uh, sort of set up a workflow of which endpoint calls you know, in which order. And then for each of these endpoints, it's also going to call the the test code and pre-request script code that you have uh, for each of the endpoints that you have here. And we'll talk a little bit about how that can affect your performance as well. But normally, we would have had all of this just on a single sort of uh, panel over here on the right side. But now we've got a tab over here called Performance. Um, and this will actually, oh, it's not going to work in the in the web based version. So I'll pull up the desktop app here in a minute. Um, because this this does need to run locally. So the, the key with this performance tool is it's not using the Postman cloud, it's actually using your local machine. And so it's it's very similar to running like a J meter Apache bench, it's running on your local hardware to say how many like clients do you want to spin up and things like that. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop sharing this screen, I'll actually pull up the application here. And then we, we'll, do uh, to, we do have to open up a bunch of uh, processes and threads, which is why from the web, it's not straightforward. Gotcha. Okay. Um, and I apologize that this one is not going to be dark mode. So uh, shield your eyes. But we're going <laughs> to <laughs> we're going to uh, pull this back up here, and let me go back and find the right workspace, and we'll go share. All right, here we go. Um, all right, so here's my collection. Uh, let me zoom in on this one more. And we'll go into the runner. Oops, I guess I need to actually yeah. share that screen. There we go. Exactly. Um, Perfect. So I, so I click on the collection name. I go over to the three dots. I go to run. And now over here, I've got that performance. So I'm not going to save a new joke, but I'm going to go into the performance tool here. Uh, I'm just going to close this down on the left just so you can see a little bit more of what's going to happen here. So um, again, as part of the collection runner, this would normally be where you would launch this manually or schedule it as a monitor. Uh, but now we've got this performance tab over here on this side. And what we can do here is we can tell it how many virtual users do we want to spin up. And this will vary based on the plan that you're on. Um, but I think we allow up to 100 virtual users. And then there's a duration of like, how long do you want to run this for? I'm just going to run it for two minutes. And I'm going to run it with like, 20 virtual users and then you can tell it whether you want it to run like full blast like all of those users all at the same time or if you gradually want to ramp up and how quickly do you want to ramp up um, and so you'll kind of see that performance uh, sort of tick up over time so i'm just going to run this for two minutes i'll run it with 20 virtual users yeah, let's do 50. Um, and then I'm just going to go ahead and run that. And so what we're going to see here is we're going to see kind of this visual representation of, you know, let's actually go call those endpoints and let's see what happens uh, over time. And so we're gradually going to see how many requests get sent. We're going to see the average time per request. Uh, we see errors happening on some of them here, uh, 404 not found. And we'll get into like reasons why. So there's, there's some... Uh, some things happening there when we're trying to call a particular joke with an ID value. Um, that's why we're getting that 404 not found error. Um, but we can gradually see like the the get random uh, the get random call is basically the blue line down here at the bottom, and we're gradually seeing that one get faster and faster. So because this is this is running on Firebase, Firebase is like, oh, this is being hit a lot. Let me spin up extra instances or whatever. So in the in the modern realm of having things like elastic load balancers and, and so on, uh, we see that performance like gradually get better and better and better as automated systems are like, oh, this is being hit a lot more. Let me spin up more servers or let me spin up more instances geographically and so on. Uh, and so you'll gradually see that performance get better and better. In back back in the old days, back when I was a kid, you know, doing development, we had to like literally rack our own servers, and like we had very limited hardware, and so you had to kind of make things uh, work with the hardware that you had. And so, um, 
having having a tool like this that can tell you like okay which of those endpoints are slow which endpoints are throwing errors uh is is actually a really good sort of visual representation of the speed and and sort of you know like we see this decline in the latency um well, decline in, in a good way. Like we're seeing that latency time come down quite a lot uh, over time as the app kind of wakes up and realizes what kind of load it's going to be put under. Um, then that, those application times get a little bit better. Um, so Vivek, walk us through a little bit of like what's actually happening here. Because you were talking about like the the desktop app is spinning up threads and so on. Like describe, describe that like we're five. Uh, what does all of that mean? Well... Um... If I were to explain it to a five-year-old, we have to take your one laptop and turn it into 50 laptops, essentially, <laughs> and hook it all up, hook it all up to the same internet connection. And then each virtual user is just someone who's, you know, pretending to use that laptop. And they're just executing the request that you've selected. Um, that's like probably the most basic use case is just have a series of requests. Uh, but yeah, like what we're seeing here is exactly as you described, that gray line that's ramping up, that's showing uh, how many virtual users we're trying to simulate at any point in time. So we ramped up to 50 and we stayed there for some time. And, you know, the, this being, uh, I think you mentioned uh, Firebase, right? So I'm guessing this is running mm -hmm. on TV somewhere. Yeah, it's uh, on Google. Yep. Yeah. So eventually it, it's like, okay, well, the, this thing has been warmed up. So now the response time is, uh, what, like 400, 350 ish on average, and it kind of stays steady there. Right. So, yeah, I mean, because it's staying steady, you can probably say that, yes, this service can safely handle 50 users without a problem. Mm -hmm. uh, but, well, within within your tolerance level, right? I mean, if if two hundred and fifty milliseconds is like that's acceptable, then yeah, you can see fifty people hitting it at the same time. They're going to get about a two hundred fifty millisecond response. If you want it to be faster, now you'd have to figure out, okay, well, where are we spending that time? Uh, you know, behind the scenes, because right now this tool is just going to tell you how long it takes. It's not necessarily going to give you that observability into like why did it take two hundred fifty milliseconds. Um, Cool. Okay. Um, John, any, uh, any insights that you want to share? Anything that you've kind of seen like around uh, this kind of stuff? Um, definitely no. It's just, you know, the also, you know, other information metadata about that you can get out like the 99th percentile, the 95th percentile. So you can, you know, skin it and view it that way. Um, if you want to isolate a specific request in the cloud, yeah. And just see how it's returning. Um, well, well, get random joke is five times slower. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Uh, other thing to note. Well, uh, well, that's 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 because the that's well, the get, getting the joke by ID was a hundred percent error rate. That was why that one was so oh. fast. <laughs> so okay. we'll we'll get into that one in in a minute. I'll I'll go in and I'll fix that up. Yeah, uh, the errors you're seeing also are just non two x's, right? So maybe a four x x, five hundred hundred. Uh, those are all cal classified as errors. So even redirects so, would be considered as an error rate here. Like it, it's uh, the threads that you spin up don't uh, don't follow redirect requests. Uh, I think the default configuration is that they do, but these are all examples of settings that we're going to be slowly exposing over time. Okay. Uh, because when we started off, we're like, okay, what are the what are sensible defaults, right? But mm -hmm. I, I know there's going to be folks out there who might consider, let's say, a 410 to be successful, right? Depending on the API's use case. But gotcha. that's something we'll work up to. Okay. So we have some really good questions coming in chat that I, I'd love to uh, uh, to kind of uh, look through here. So someone is asking, what are the formats in which we can download the reports of these test results? Like, is this something that we can actually extract from Postman? and uh, kind of look at in some way. And do you know what that format would be? Yeah, uh, so the version that you're using right now, it doesn't have exporting yet, but okay. we're literally working on that right now. So down the line, um, we will be able to export HTML and PDF. And I think folks have also, in different conversations, folks have also mentioned they need CSV. So that's also something we're, uh, we're thinking of. Okay. 
And someone else is asking, uh, so similar vein, you might might take this as a product idea of uh, can it give us the CPU use uh, during that load testing? So is there some way that you could sort of keep track of that over time? So the very first uh, like sketch that we made of the product, it actually did have CPU memory and network bandwidth at the very top above this graph. But the thing about the product in, in in its current form is that it's using your CPU and your network and your memory to generate load, to show real-time data, to run the Postman app, to right. do everything else. So the more visualization we throw at it, especially in real-time, the worse it gets at generating load. Right. <laughs> so at the so moment, yeah, like we're not showing it, but um, when we eventually move it off of the local client, at that time, we'll be able to show. Yeah. Action. So that kind of answers this question as well. Can we do performance testing on multiple collections and parallels? Like you can if you have the hardware, but again, it's using your localized hardware right now. The This performance tool is using your local hardware in order to spin up, you know, these virtual users and go making all these calls and then track all that stuff. So it's, it's hardware based. Um, and it's also somewhat based on your plan as far as how many virtual users you can spin up. Like I think our, I think we top out of like 500 virtual users, which is quite a lot of load on any, you know, even modern CPU is, is going to be quite a lot to spin up 500 concurrent threads and, and so on to actually go uh, make these calls. Um, it's going to put a, a pretty heavy load on uh, on that. So yes, you could. Like you could have like multiple versions of the of the desktop app running and have them all kind of running in parallel, but everything that you run on your system is all impacting this performance. And so if you're, uh, there was another question earlier, like um, would it make sense to use this tool to test against a development environment and like a staging environment or a testing environment? It's like if you're running the app on local host and you're also hitting it on, you know, you're effectively hitting your own local host from this tool, then that's gonna degrade all of that performance. So, um, and then the other thing that I wanna talk about is within the, within the collection itself, like within the, the actual uh, request that you're making, if you've got JavaScript code in, uh, in the endpoints, so if we had test code in here, pre-request code in here, every time that endpoint gets hit, that code is also being executed. So if you've got like a really, really large amount of like, you know, contract testing or, you know, something where it's like breaking, uh, breaking that response down and doing a bunch of processing that also gets run in this performance tool. So every time it's calling these endpoints, it's running any pre-request script that you have, as well as any test code after that request finishes. And so that's all going to have performance implications. So one suggestion I would have there is, um, if you really need to fine tune that and say, I just want to go call that endpoint and I don't need to do all that testing is go in and like comment out your testing um, or, you know, make a copy of your collection where you go in and you remove any tests where it's just literally just testing the response that will improve the performance a little bit. Um, you're still hitting that endpoint, but then you're not taking up extra system resources by uh, sort of processing this JavaScript and running this JavaScript as part of that performance tool. Um, Vivek, one one question that I had, because I actually gave a talk about this in, in Toronto at a meetup last week, is uh, one question that, that someone brought up is, could we have a flag in that performance tool that says, don't run any of my test code? Um, at the moment, no, but let me add that to my list. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Because when, I mean, when I, we're talking about I, developing the product, right? I mean, we yeah. obviously use the product a lot, uh, especially to test the performance testing APIs that, that are underneath all these. So, right. like, these are all things that have come up where we're like, yeah, but, you know, in this particular scenario, we don't want to run the tests and going through and commenting everything out is also a pain in the butt. Right, so. right. So, um, and and I can see why you wouldn't necessarily want to disable all of the testing because you might have some pre-request script that needs to run uh, you know, in order to you know, go process something in order to even call this endpoint. So for example, the reason that this get joke by ID endpoint was failing is because I'm not actually passing an ID value here. Um, so I've actually got a little bit of code I'm going to put in here. This is just going to pick a random number from 1 to 200. It's going to pad it with zeros and then it's going to pass that as a parameter. So we do have a 
uh, an API call that we can make that says, I want to go add a query parameter to this. So when I call this code, now it's actually going to go, I'm, I'm effectively telling JavaScript to go fetch a random joke by an ID value. Um, and what we're going to see when I run this performance tool, we're actually going to see that this endpoint is a little bit faster than telling Firebase to go find a random joke. Uh, so I'm going to go run that again. And then while this is running, I'm going to uh, address some other questions because you all have some amazing questions coming in. I want to make sure that we get to that. So let me go run the, uh, that runner again over here. Not do the post. And I'll only do... Yeah, no, we'll, we'll keep it back. We'll do 50 again. And again, we'll run that for two minutes. And we'll ramp that up again over one minute. And then we'll go ahead and run. Cool. So while that's going, uh, let's go. Let's go find some other questions in here because we had some uh, some really good questions. Um, so can you go over the performance details for the total duration? Briefly describe what each of those columns mean. Um, so Vivek, can you walk us through a little bit, like what what all we're seeing here, and then like maybe describe what we have down here at the bottom? Yeah. Well, at the moment we we've kept the metrics pretty basic. So when you're looking at uh, all these virtual users, you're looking at aggregated information, right? If you're sending one request and you see that, okay, this, re this response came back in like 100 milliseconds, cool, that makes sense. But when you're sending a total of like 100,000 or 200,000 or a couple million requests, that number on its own is, doesn't really help, right? And uh, earlier we saw, when we were looking at the table, we saw that, um, uh, the second request had 100% error rate, but it was responding faster. So this information is meant to help you under, like, at least start to understand which part of your API is slowing down, which is why mm -hmm. we showed the average response time there as well. And um, anyone who's worked enough with numbers will know that averages can be misleading, which is why we also have the different percentiles because just because like one or 10 of those responses out of like thousands came back slower doesn't necessarily mean that your API endpoint as a whole is slow. So if you're looking at the 95th percentile or 99th percentile, that the reason we show that there is so that you can kind of trim out those outliers and then understand, okay, what is my endpoint actually performing like for most of our users, right? Gotcha. Okay. So I, I, I fixed that error. So we weren't getting those error details again. But uh, yeah, like you're right. Like some of the some of the math of like what is an average, what are the means, and, and things like that. And this is another one of my favorite dad jokes. It's not all math jokes are funny, just some. Um, so yeah, like looking at, at what the tables down here. Uh, I think Vivek gave a gave a pretty good uh, indication here. And then uh, John, you were also talking about like 90th percentile and, and so on. Um, Talk to us a little bit more about like what that means. Like if we were to explain this to someone who didn't really understand math, like what does that mean? Uh, yeah, so you know, kind of the the backing up about a little bit about it. Why is that important? Is you, as a service provider, you need to you meet an uptime, make sure your services are fulfilling your clients' needs at some percentage, uh, and that's what we look at, and that's what we use like these percentages: ninetieth percentile, ninety fifth percentile. It's part of the SLA you start contracting with a company. Um, yeah, you need to have a license agreement that says you're up and reliable. You know, some so amount of time that I can. That, that's really what it's about. And, and maybe your clients want to set this look at themselves introspectively to make sure that they are meeting their own SLAs that they're telling uh, customers. So that's kind of why why that's important and why we provide it here. Okay, great. Um... Sundeep also asked a good question. Not sure if there's an ability to plug an external load generator in to generate a load test, but how heavy would that be on your system resource right now during the current testing? Hmm. Well, at the moment, the answer is still no. Uh, as for how heavy it is, while developing like <laughs> the versions that we didn't release of the product, they would basically bring your laptop to a crawl. So with a bunch of our own performance testing, we figured out that, okay, like where do we start to kind of throttle the performance test? That's also why we have the different view limits. It's coming in because it's running on your own hardware, right? So at the moment, if you're running, um, I mean, if you're trying to run it on a Raspberry Pi, don't try 500 virtual users. <laughs> I 
it's not gonna work. I mean, you you could try. This is not going to go well. <laughs> yeah, well, you won't get the 500, right? You'll get like, I mean, I don't know, depending on your Raspberry Pi specs, maybe 100. Hmm. Um, but yeah, it, it's not going to kill your laptop, but you should be aware of how many resources you have available. Because keep in mind, you do have to like split those resources amongst the different users you are trying to simulate. Right. right. Yeah, I wonder. I wonder, could we could we implement? Because uh, I, I know we're starting to use a lot more AI, even within Postman. Could we have some sort of AI tool where we just say like, do do a maximum amount of virtual users, and have the AI kind of watch like what's actually happening and sort of normalize and go, oh, you know what, this system is going to top out at like fifty or fifty five versus this system is going to top out around you know five hundred or something like that. Because uh, you would need some pretty beefy hardware to get all the way up to that 500 virtual user limit that that we allow on some of our plans. Hmm. Actually, so I'm I'm running a M1, I think 16 gigs, something like that. Okay. So 500, you you can do on that hardware without a problem. Okay. You have like right. an M2 Max, uh, you can technically go beyond 500, I suppose. Nice. Um, but coming back to the AI bit, I mean, I know that, like the audience is going to be like, ooh, AI. Um, but we can actually do that without AI. We can just use a, a function. <laughs> yeah, basically. no, that's fair. You have CPU utilization. You have trends in CPU utilization. Same with memory and network. So as you're ramping up, you can just you can see beforehand where the bottleneck is going to be. And um, we do actually have mathematical functions that we use internally to figure out how many reliable the user are actually being simulated, right? Okay. So I think, I'm trying to think like, what would we use AI for? Um, I don't know, I have to think about that. Yeah, yeah, no worries. Uh, next question that we had, can we do this on Postman flows? Hmm, uh, not at the moment. So uh, <laughs> before I answer not at the moment for like a lot of <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There is a product out. roadmap, but we can't always talk about what's on the roadmap. So yeah, yeah, exactly. Like this is still pretty fresh. I think it's been a couple months, and that's it. Um, and JMeter has been around for, um, I, I mean, it's Apache, so I imagine a decade at least. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, at the moment, um, no. Uh, flows is it, it's trying to address something very different. I think. So if you look at the, the things that you can build in flows, you can build cyclic things. You can build like very, very complex logic. And not all of that will make sense in the context of a performance test. So gotcha. in, in the case of a performance test, you can add complex logic. That's why we have like the pre-request script and the test script. So you can add conditional workflows and everything. But I, I don't think going introducing cyclic logic is going to be a good idea. Right. Mm. That's a longer answer, I suppose. Yeah, no worries. But, uh, but right, okay, go ahead, flows are really just a collection yeah. of of endpoints strung together with some, you know, between them. You could you could represent mm -hmm. that almost. You could represent that in a performance test that way. Yeah, um, so you can represent. Like, yeah, you can represent most or some flows as a collection, but not every flow. So, yeah. Right. There's a there's some intermediate. Yeah. Yeah. And and the idea of building out flows is it's it's kind of that visual aspect. So if you're not a programmer, you know, like we see a lot of non-developers now using flows to like chain together these requests. So as a developer, I'm going in and I'm adding like the test code and the pre-request script, and I'm kind of now building that as a Lego block. Where now, you know, if John wasn't a programmer and he knows, oh, okay, I've got this block and I've got this block and I've got this block. And, you know, based on all those blocks, now I can go like build a little R2D2 application or whatever because you've got those Lego blocks available. So as a dev, I kind of see my job as like go build those Lego blocks by building out the, all the different collections and all the different requests so that someone else can go into flows and like put those together in an interesting way to build out like full workflows or applications. Uh, from there but um yeah someone else is asking really quick is this being recorded uh so yeah you will be able to rewatch this on twitch and linkedin for a period of time but we put all these videos up on youtube as well so we're streaming live on youtube and it'll continue to be available on youtube as well um 
again, as far as like roadmap, are there going to be more capabilities other than just a fixed number of users and a ramp up number of users? I imagine like the, the team is going to be taking product feedback on this and, and yeah. uh, looking at changes on this over time as well. So, um, someone is, else is asking, um, does this prefer, or can we run this performance testing through Newman? Is that is it going to be possible to run uh, like the 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 performance tooling from either Postman CLI or Newman, like from a command line? I feel like I should have joined with a T-shirt that said "Not at the moment." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you just yeah. change 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 your change your name label under under your name from yeah. your your Twitter yeah. handle to like "Not at the moment." Um, <laughs> I mean, moment again, cool. again, we're we're taking product feedback on this. So if you've got those kinds of suggestions, please come hang out in our community forum, and and let us hear like what kinds of ideas you have. I mean, we we listen to our customers. This is why we build things like this into our tools because folks are asking for this kind of stuff. Yep. Um, and someone else was also commenting like, yeah, someone, someone was asking about like CPU load and so on. And someone's like, well, just open your task manager maybe and just kind of look mm -hmm. at your own resource utilization from that. It would be hard to kind of correlate because again, it depends on everything you're running on your system. If you've got, you know, some music player app running in the background while you're doing this test, that's also taking away from like performance uh, of the machine. So the more that you can kind of close down to run this, uh, I think the better. Um, so I want to dive in a little bit on the stats here, but definitely keep asking these questions. These are absolutely fantastic questions coming in. Um, so one of the things that we saw here, now that I fixed that error, we kind of see, again, you know, we kind of see this drop over time of, of the, uh, of the latency and how long it takes to call these endpoints, but having Firebase generate that random, uh, joke, was still kind of on average taking about 400 milliseconds. But when we have the JavaScript tool in Postman generate a random number and then go call that specific joke, it's significantly faster. Um, I thought that that was pretty interesting. So again, from a from a visibility point of view, if, if you're testing out an API, but you don't actually know what's happening in the code, you're going to look at this and go, well, you know, these are effectively doing the same thing. Why is one so much faster than the other? This is where you might want to get into uh, more of an observability type of tool. Um, and if you've been following the news about Postman, we recently acquired a company called Akita, and Akita is going to help with that observability. So you can now put those hooks into your code. And, uh, you know, we, we don't have the integration built in yet, but we're going to be uh, working on more integration between Postman and Akita so that you'll be able to actually go in and see within the tool, like it's slow, but here's why. Because right now this performance tool is just going to tell you how long it takes to call that endpoint without a lot of observability into like, why did this endpoint take 388 milliseconds and this one only took 80 milliseconds? Like, why? Like, why did that happen? So you would need you would need some like a, additional uh, observability or logging or tracing or something through your system to to make that determination. Um, and so we'll be we'll be talking a lot more about that in coming months as we uh, as we kind of get all that stuff integrated. And uh, hopefully we can get that team actually on the live stream at some point and kind of introduce Akita and uh, and talk a little bit more about that as we go. Um, someone's asking for the link to the community forum. So let me go grab that and I'll, uh, I'll post that in chat. Definitely keep asking, uh, definitely keep asking questions. Let me go grab that community link and I will share that with everybody. I feel like a lot of the questions are just about future capabilities. So, uh, should I just talk about the roadmap? <laughs> I feel like... Um, sure. Yeah. I mean, as, as, as much as you can or, or want to, but yeah, it would be, uh, it'd be fantastic if you could. Well, I think long-term, um, you know, since it is a product that we also use, we understand where the gaps are, and we do we do have conversations directly and indirectly with a lot of our our users. So pretty much everything that's come up, they're all things we're already aware of, and there are a few of these things that are on the more immediate roadmap. And just to be clear, by immediate, I don't mean tomorrow. Just don't yeah. want to commit to like tomorrow or anything. Um, but the biggest ask I think has been more virtual users. Like we just, we want to be able to simulate more and we also want to be able to separate the, um, the visualization aspect of it and make that more powerful without compromising on the load generation capabilities. So that's where the cloud-based version of this is going to come up, which we're, we're going to be working on. Um, so somewhere down the line, you'll be able to simulate 
10,000 virtual users if you want to. And we will find a way to also allow you to see like real-time metrics and everything else you want, right? So that's, I think, one of the biggest things on the roadmap and probably the thing that pretty much everyone we talk to beyond a certain scale will, will be asking for. Um, I also mentioned, uh, I mean, sorry, I also saw someone was asking about like having each of the individual virtual users behave differently. So like give them different uh, inputs. Um, and someone also mentioned data files. So down the line, that's another thing we're going to be supporting is um, if you have, if you're simulating, let's say 500 virtual users and you want each of them to use, let's say you're, you're testing a sign up endpoint or something or a login endpoint. So you want everyone to use a different username and password or hmm. something then you could you could upload a 500 uh, row CSV, and then each virtual user would just map onto one of those rows. So you'd be able to have very fine grained control over those things, right? And when you combine that with scripting, that means now you can actually like you could say that um, you know 200 of those rows are A, and the remaining are B. And in your script, you can actually have A and B behave differently. So you get some really advanced mm -hmm. use cases unlocked with that. Uh, Export, I think I already mentioned we're coming out with. Um, what else do I have? Oh, something that's coming out before that is actually error drill downs. Because uh, when you're looking at aggregated information, and like earlier we saw 50% error, uh, error rate and we were seeing 404, but a 404 can, you know, it, it can be caused by multiple things. So we're also mm -hmm. going to have error class details, which will allow you to see for those 404s. What was the response body, perhaps? You know, interesting. So okay. 200 404s, maybe 150 are because of one cause and 50 are because of another. So the two uh, walls drill down into that. And that way, you nice. know which part of your server you need to go look at instead of just like, oh, something is wrong somewhere. Yeah. Um, It'd be interesting if, if we could get some API hooks in the JavaScript testing where we can actually push that content to the performance tool in some way. Uh, because if, if we're writing test code to actually parse that response body, um, if we could like have our own little hook, like, oh, if, if we saw this happen, like within our test code, if we get this kind of response, push this message out to the performance tool or push this out to the performance tool. Uh, that would be kind of interesting. Right. Yeah, I've captured that request and, and uh, pushed it up to the, the appropriate cues. Cool. Uh, so that is something other clients have asked for, just custom okay. error capturing. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Uh, Ashish was even also. In sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I was going to say, even like uh, have the ability to customize content coming back in the performance, you know, maybe specify how you want to come back, also just show in the table. Hmm. Yeah. Just or some correlation like this header caused this error, this header caused this error. Yeah. Uh, Ashish was also asking, can we perform SOAP web service performance testing? I mean, any, any, any request that you can put in a collection, you can run this performance tool on within Postman right now. Again, the the performance tool is based on the desktop app because it's using your local hardware. Uh, Vivek kind of teased a little bit, like we're going to have a cloud version of this in the future. So I imagine that will run in the in the web browser version. But for the time being, this performance tool is only available in the desktop app. Um, and if you try to access that tab within the web app, it'll say, hey, you got to use the desktop application in order to do it because it is using your local hardware to do that. Um, so, yes, any any endpoint, you know, that you can build around a collection, I, I think you can do this performance testing. Yep. Awesome. All right. Well, we got uh, so we were going to aim for somewhere between an hour, hour and a half. Um, anything else you want to chat about? Otherwise, we can start to wrap up from here. Is it worth mentioning? Vivek, that uh, for enterprise clients, uh, it's, uh, I guess you have a question will be available. Yeah, uh, at the moment. Yeah. At the moment, yeah. So, because what, what we've seen is that uh, the enterprise clients do tend to have higher view requirements and whatnot. So, we're still trying to figure out like how much can we really squeeze out of your your machine, mm -hmm. while also spinning up a JavaScript environment to run your scripts and everything else. So yeah, we're working on that. Awesome. For our enterprise customers on the call that don't see the tab, uh, uh, talk to your customer service, customer success, uh, and we can probably enable that for you. Yep. Awesome.
yeah, I imagine I imagine enterprise users are going to want like a much heavier, uh, you know, number of virtual users and stuff like that. So I imagine they're they're going to be the ones running more of the the cloud based version where it's like we want to hit this with like ten thousand users or twenty thousand users or whatever those limits are going to be. So yeah, next Black cool. Friday, lots of performance tests to be done before that. Yep. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I love that that we're constantly like building this kind of stuff in here, you know, so that developers don't don't have to, uh, you know, go build out their own tooling for like go hit all these endpoints in this order. Like, it just it it's so much easier because I've used Apache Bench a ton in the past, and that like having to set up that workflow of like go call this one a bunch of times, now go call this one a bunch of times, and go call this one a bunch of times, not really being able to capture the output easily to like feed in as an input on the next one. We're having something like a you know postman where you can say like hey go grab the output of this and pass it into the next request like it makes it so much easier to to process all of that. So awesome. Well, let's. Uh, I think we can start to wrap up from here. So we'd like to end our our live stream with like community shoutouts and anything sort of coming up. Um, John Vivek, do either of you have anything like any events that you've got coming up that you're going to be at uh, that you can that you can share? Um. One event is the Postman Flows uh, celebration, San Francisco on the 16th. Uh, there's going to be a, a group of postmen um, showcasing the flows they've built, uh, as well as you know just doing demos with flows and how. You know, um, and I don't know uh, uh, right now, but uh, I can uh, find the blog post announcement and show. It's going to be announced in the Postman blog pretty soon, I believe. But that's kind of up so yeah i look forward to that that's the awesome. event i will not be attending in san francisco <laughs> is that august 16th yes yeah yeah okay so next week um also speaking of next week we've got so we do like a a monthly release cycle now at postman we got some pretty neat stuff coming out next month uh september is going to be like a really really big release uh so you're going to want to watch for those but next week we got some pretty interesting stuff uh coming out uh, around our proxy and uh, interceptor tooling uh, that we're going to be making some changes on over the next couple of months as well. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, Vivek, anything uh, anything you've got coming up? Uh, well, I'll, I'll be in SF, but I don't, I don't think I'll be at the event that John mentioned. Okay. I'll probably be flying in too late, late for that. But other than that, no, I mean, nothing's happening where I live <laughs> yet. Okay. <laughs> Oh, we'll have to we'll have to change that. Um, so I'm I'm just dropping a link in chat. We've actually got a whole channel in our community forum where we list out the events where you know we've got something going on with Postman. We got a lot of conferences coming up. Q3, Q4 is always a pretty busy time for our DevRel team. We're traveling around, doing lots of talks and lots of events. So if you want to meet up with us in person, uh, if you happen to be at any of these like meetups and conferences and so on, please come by and say hi to us. Uh, you'll usually see us wearing our, our Postman t-shirts or Postman swag. You know, the Vex got the, uh, the Postman sweatshirt going on. Um, and, uh, so definitely come by, say hi to us, you know, ask us lots of questions about, you know, what you would like to see. You know, my job as a, as a developer advocate is to take your feedback and like bring it back to the company and talk about like, Hey, this is what customers are actually asking for. This is how they like to use the tool and so on. So please go check out that event forum. And, uh, and if you happen to be nearby, like, feel free to uh, to reach out to us and, and say hi. Um, the next thing I'm going to kind of plug this one again is our Intergalactic that's coming up on the 23rd. Um, and this is going to be all about GraphQL. And again, you can register for free. And if you register for it, even if you can't attend, if you register for it, Zoom will send you a link to the recording afterwards. But we put all those recordings up on YouTube anyway. Um, but, uh, but come hang out with the team. You can ask all kinds of questions about GraphQL and how to do like good testing with GraphQL. Um, and sort of how to plan that out and, and get that built out as an API inside of Postman. Um, I think that's pretty much all I wanted to share on that side. But yeah, definitely come check out some events. I've got uh, I got some conferences coming up myself. I'm going to be at uh, uh, API Days London in a couple of weeks. I'll be at uh, the gRPC Conf at Google uh, later in September. I'm going to be out in Raleigh, North Carolina for All Things Open uh, in the middle of October. I've got events like almost every week uh, through the through the end of the year of some of some sort. So definitely come by and say hi to us. Uh, lots of events going on. Even uh, I think today 
Uh, there's DevOps Days Chicago, I believe, going on this week. Uh, we've got a, several team members out there at a booth. So if you happen to be uh, in in the Chicago area and you can stop by for that, uh, they'd love to say hi to you. Um, it's pretty much it. So thanks again, uh, John and Vivek. Thank you so much for your time today. Uh, it's always fun, like kind of hearing your perspectives and, and, you know, from the solutions architect point of view, like, you know, what have you seen and what are our other customers sort of facing? And then Vivek having someone on the team that actually built out those performance tools is always fantastic to kind of hear your perspective, even though the answer tended to be like, we, we don't do that yet, but you know, someday, um, we always love just coming up with these kinds of products, ideas and, and so on. So thank you both for your time today. Really appreciate it. Uh, thanks again for joining us, everyone. We'll catch you next week on the live stream. Uh, definitely, please go register for that uh, for that intergalactic coming up, and we'll catch you next week. All right, thanks, everyone. cheers, everyone. Take care. Bye bye.